John woke to the shrill cry of his alarm clock and lay there, rigid, his usual morning condition. But there was another reason John couldn't get out of bed. It was the weight. A weight that had nothing to do with his muscles or fat or sweaty blankets. John was weighed down by a piece of paper. The invitation to his high school reunion. From across the years, the words he'd heard in the schoolyard were still clear. You're a loser. No one will ever love you. John threw on an outfit. He didn't feel comfortable wandering around his home naked. John needed to shower and wash off the sweaty stink of desperate sadness. Most people would shower, then dress, but John was running late. John had three months until the reunion to turn his life around. First, he needed to clean up. John called it his study, but it was basically for games and porn. Mostly porn. The only reason he'd ordered so much takeout was because Angel, the delivery peen, made John feel butterflies in his testicles. John suddenly realized the time. Distracted by his new drive to improve his life, he had become late. He needed to hurry, or he'd miss the bus to work. John had left his apartment late, but if he caught the express bus, he might make it to work on time. John didn't really like his job, but it had two qualities in its favor. One, he could pay his rent, and two, Barbara. Currently John's top candidate for his reunion date. John noticed a moderately attractive peen waiting at the stop. He was tempted to talk to her. He tried to start a conversation and did not get the reaction he'd hoped for. It was probably because he was a minimum wage peen. She could probably sense it. The office hummed with cold, fluorescent lighting. The air was cold and stale, lifeless. How long had John worked here? Long enough to deserve better. John was late, but he felt daring. He could sneak into the office through the archives, or he could stroll through the front entrance with enough confidence to bluff his boss. Predictably, he chose the direct route. John was nearly trampled by the morning coffee rush. Everyone else was hard at work, grinding away. John might actually get away with this. The boss. He homed in on John, deluging him with spit and buzzwords. The boss ran out of synonyms for John's failings and gave him an ultimatum. Barbara would definitely not be interested in dating John if he was unemployed. He had to get to the Quality Assurance Department.
There might be a faulty dildo just waiting to cost the company millions in lawsuits. John would have to test them all. Every atom of John's rectum began to vibrate with the frequencies of pure pleasure. His orifice was a paradise. This vibrator would end all wars. It was good. That one was good too. The Prostate Pounder X900 series? The most advanced vibrator on the market. Sweet mother of no, John, that's too much pleasure for one anus to handle. John's butt hurt, but his heart was proud. If that vibe had gotten out into the world, it could have injured a customer as badly as it had ravaged his anus. The boss arrived and congratulated John on taking one for the team and jumping on the hand grenade, or in this case, putting it up his butt. John was having trouble following the conversation because he was quite high on suppository painkillers. And then the boss said it. Promotion. Finally, the company was recognizing John's hard work and ignoring his minor faults like lack of talent, constant lateness and flatulence. John's new office smelt like polished wood and success. John's success. Sam dropped by. He'd heard John had been hurt. John said he was fine. He wasn't a softie to complain about a mildly ruptured rectum. Besides, he had a promotion to celebrate. John had met Sam in college during a sports ball game. He'd given him some stiff competition. Not stiff enough. They'd started at Flesh Corp product testing together. Nothing builds a friendship like a long day of dildo mounting. Yes, John had known Sam for a while. But John couldn't hang out with Sam. He had a reunion to prepare for. He was going out with Barbara tonight. He just had to ask her. Everyone was quiet, listening to the presentation. A good moment for John to ask Barbara out. That's not Barbara, John. Nope. Barbara agreed. Well, she nodded. Sort of. Things were really going John's way. John tried to act as suave as possible and listen to Barbara talk business. He didn't want to blow his chances at long-term love and short-term sex. Barbara began to talk about monthly feedback figures and John started to zone out, imagining him and Barbara at the reunion, a power couple. She would make his classmates sick with envy, if he could get her to tone down the boring chatter. John's balls were gripped by certainty. Barbara was the perfect date for the reunion. John thought he would impress Barbara by going behind the bar and showing the bartender a thing or two. 
Despite Barbara's protests that it was unnecessary, John knew that a true gentleman should follow her home. He was excited. There was still three months until the reunion and he'd already landed his perfect date. All he had to do was seal the deal. Barbara thanked John for the evening and politely did not invite him inside for coffee or sex, even though John had dropped some pretty obvious hints he'd be into both, or just the sex. The door slammed on John's hopes. He didn't understand. He'd laughed at all Barbara's pie chart jokes. He'd listened to her boring stories. The blank eyes of the lawn flamingos were witnesses to John's shame. John began the lonely walk home, thoughts tumbling like shoes in a dryer. He had done everything wrong. Barbara had led him on just to humiliate him. John felt empty. How could he get love? He felt like he was missing something, some key to attracting sex. But John was shooting blanks. What did Peens want? Then it hit John out of nowhere. Stuff. He had the success. He just needed to show it off. But where was John going to get all the stuff he wanted? John needed a sign. A new day, a new John. He waited outside his local buttload store for it to open eager to spend his promotion bonus on stuff. The best way to impress women. If it was buttloads of stuff John wanted, then he would need buttloads of cash. There's nothing like a rectum full of money to make a peen feel like a man. Suddenly it occurred to John that he was going to make a lot of choices. And every one of those choices would tell the world who he was. Did he want cheese or sausage? What would a date think when they sat in John's home? Comfort or style? John went with comfort, plus it matched the couch he already had. John weighed up all the differences, but this was a tough choice. Something told John this was the TV for him. John chose the extremely, obviously bad TV. John realized that it was only two months and 29 days until the reunion. Time flies. Cactus or rose? Was John a rugged hero or a romantic poet? If John grew his own flowers, then he'd save on romantic gestures in the long run.
There was nothing John could take with him to the grave. Except his coffin. Death is inevitable. Style is not. John liked to get his pizza delivered. That way he could see Delilah, the delivery peen. She always made him smile. John knew that Delilah thought pineapple on pizza was an abomination. What bedding would Delilah prefer? John couldn't help wondering. Pizza sheets would show her that John could also deliver in bed. Devoid of any sense of style, buying new clothes would be John's toughest challenge. The silky fabric made John feel like a celebrity. John decided to go with the outfit. Music, the food of love. Should John go retro sophisticated or just retro? John's personal nostalgia was more important than sound quality. Every can was made of metal, pulled from the bones of the earth, wrestled to the surface and smelted in roaring furnaces. All so John could buy peas preserved in salty water and stick them up his butt. John's new purchases were on the way to his apartment. All he had to do was invite a date over. One look at all his stuff and they'd be overwhelmed with sexual desire. John felt proud and also hungry. It gave him an idea. He should invite Delilah over for dinner. John was excited. Delilah was on her way. He just needed to set the mood to romance. John hoped she didn't have allergies. That must be Delilah at the door. The door opened and there was Delilah. John gulped down his nerves and invited her in. John could tell that Delilah was impressed by his stuff. It was time to crank up the mood. To seduction. John wanted to offer Delilah wine, but he'd already popped his cork. Delilah started looking as nervous as John felt. He assumed it was because she was shy too. They really were compatible. Of course, at the reunion, he couldn't mention Delilah was a delivery peen. That would be embarrassing. Delilah suddenly headed for the door. And just like that, John was alone again. Delilah hadn't even looked at his stuff. Not even the pizza bedspread. The rejection burned. John felt insignificant. He had everything he wanted. The job, the money, the stuff. So much stuff. He wanted to destroy all of it. Fuck off, inanimate objects. Shove it into the abyss. His stuff didn't matter. He was a shaft in the machine. A lonely piston pumping away like all the others in his rigid place. Nothing special about him. Why should Delilah or Barbara or any other peen be interested in dating him? He was just like everyone else and they could tell. Fuck you, Fridge! John wanted to be special, but he had to face the numb truth. He wasn't. And all the money and stuff he'd ever accumulate wouldn't change that. He thought it would make him unique, but it just made him more like everyone else. He should leave it all. 
Get out of this little town and go on an adventure. Your dead technology tapes. See the world. He was a boring corporate drone, but he didn't have to be. He could be a traveler, exploring jungles and climbing mountains. Be gone, boxes! He could visit the wonders of the world and get his picture taken. Like Peeny Island, the unspoiled paradise he'd seen on TV. That was it. John had to travel. Bags packed, John was ready to put 5,000 miles between him and his problems. He was leaving it all behind, including his luggage. John was so close, he could almost smell the freedom of the skies. Security sent John back through the detector. John had forgotten he had his nail clippers with him. He'd have to buy another pair soon, or he'd look ridiculous. When the acceleration of takeoff had slackened, John felt a sweet relief. He had left his worries on the runway. He was up in the clouds on his way to adventure. John's adventure had begun at last, and clearly it was a small world after all, and also a flat one. That was going to piss off the globeheads. John was having fun, but something told him he needed to go home. Probably his empty bank account. John was on his way back home. He was out of money, but money can't buy love. What it can buy are the experiences that had made John a more interesting and developed person. With a hundred Bustagram photos to prove it. Finally, everything was going smoothly. John felt good to be back on the familiar ground of home, but he would feel better to be on the familiar mattress of home. That's not John's bag. Not that one either. Nope. That's probably the right one. Close enough anyway.
Despite John's swell of fresh optimism, traveling was exhausting and he just really wanted to get home and get some sleep. Another nightmare. John's stress about getting a date for the reunion was making him think of her. Harmony. He hadn't seen her in years. Would she be at the reunion? John shook off the thought. He wasn't a child. He was a fully grown penis. John, why is the bathroom barricaded? For skin's sake! Is that a swan? John had no idea how it had gotten into his home or why it hated him so much. It would probably be best to leave it alone. John's butt started to buzz. Had he left a vibrator up there? Whatever it was, he should get it out. John's old phone. They really were indestructible. It was Sam calling. He wanted to check in on John. The travel looked fun, but it was so sudden. Was John okay? Sam was such a softy, always worrying about feelings. John had only one feeling, and it was the feeling of being awesome. He could drop Sam a text, but John was on a mission. The reunion was getting closer and he had to get a date. Fortunately, John knew exactly where to find love. John held his breath. He was about to meet his match. He had to reassure himself he could do this. He had a good job. He had nice stuff. He had traveled. He was ready to find love. On Wiener, where all his sexy travel photos would give him the pick of the pack. Mmm, hot. Too skinny. Too short. Too much foreskin. Not enough foreskin. Glasses. Bangs. Sexy. What a loser. Yep, the pick of the pack. the pick of the pack. John valued honesty in a date, but he had been expecting a different kind of dirty, a sexy and much more hygienic kind. Thank you. 
John was scared of getting circumcised so late in life. Oh, better put that on ice. It'll be okay, John. Chick sticks cars. I hope. After the reattachment surgery, the doctors had told John to rest. So he did, for six hours. John was in stitches. Karen had invited John straight over. She was not fooling around. Very exciting. And now she wanted him round the back. Karen let John know that the cake was only for the kids. So was the candy and the piñata, and that she'd be back in one hour. John laughed at Melody's hilarious bullfrog story. She was adorable. Everything was going perfectly. So far, Weena had been a parade of weirdos and rejections. If this date didn't work out, John vowed to give it up. But maybe this time, maybe today would be his day. Sharona sighed and said, you'll do. John felt a little underdressed and a lot overwhelmed. He was surrounded by strangers and Sharona was glaring at the muscular groom. At least John hadn't missed out on the cake. John realized that Sharona had only brought him to create some penis envy. What a terrible plan for so many reasons. John got excited. They were going to cut the cake. He's mine, Sharona screamed as she launched herself at the newlyweds. Suddenly, peens everywhere were yelling, No, he's mine! It was a no-holds-barred cockfight. As John dodged flying glasses and cake, he felt a stab of envy. The groom had dozens of penises after him, and John had none. It was just wrong. John left the screams and explosions behind him. It was a disastrous end to his online dating. He had tried everything, and it just wasn't good enough. He wasn't good enough. Maybe the bullies from school were right. John was a natural born loser. Swans were so simple. If you gave them bread, they liked you. But you can't take a swan to a reunion.
John wanted what that groom had. Love. Real love. The kind that makes penises fight to the death. Days later, the question was still bugging John. Why were so many penises in love with the groom? But no one loved John. It wasn't fair. John deserved attention. He had money and Instagram pics of his adventures. He even still had quite a lot of stuff. What did that penis have that John didn't? Then it hit John. That penis was so strong and hard. That's what everyone wanted. That's what John wasn't. That's what John had to be to find love. It was time to hit the gym. John arrived at his local gym. A part of him couldn't believe he was here. He just wasn't a gym penis. But John had tried everything else. If he wanted to get the perfect date, he'd need to sign up. Sam? What was he doing here? Of course, Sam was married. John's theory was right. If you get muscles, you get love. Out of nowhere, Sam asked John how he was doing really doing. For a moment, John wanted to be honest, but he didn't come to gym to be a softie. John was here to get hard. It was John's first time in a gym since school. He tried not to read too much into that. Sam went on ahead with a chip promise to meet up with John inside. John had two options. He could try month by month, or if he signed the 10-year Big Muscles Big Savings contract, he'd get a free Easy Squeezy water bottle. John only needed muscles for the reunion. After that, he wouldn't care. The gym's clean peen pool policy meant that John would have to do something he had never done before. Get naked in front of strangers. Maybe he could set a record for speediest cleanse. Naked, John could feel the blanket of steam intimately against his private parts. John pretended he was alone and not surrounded by wrinkly wet cocks. What was John nervous about? That he would be laughed at? There was nothing funny about a naked penis. Very fetching, John. It even matches your tan lines. Time to conquer the pool. Sam enthusiastically greeted John and offered to show him around. Obviously not realizing that John was a natural athlete. The pool was like baptism. The icy water washing away John's flabby flab. He found his stroke gliding through the water like an eel. An eel with large, ungainly testicles. John stuck close to Sam, just to make sure Sam knew John could swim. Not because John was worried about drowning. No, not that. This wasn't hard. John couldn't believe Peen's actually 
eventually got gold medals just for splashing around. Maybe he could become an Olympian. He was slowing down a bit, flailing a bit, but John pushed on, knowing that looking good in a speedo was the only thing that could save him from an empty existence. John wanted to take a break, forever. The pool was not his friend. It was not the blissful wet dream of his fantasies. It was a hellish prison of murderous fluid determined to drown him. No wonder life crawled out of the sea, desperate to escape the water. Done. John had not drowned, but more importantly, he had not quit. Time to hit the weight room. John's muscles bunched and bulged. The time in the gym was already paying off. Fresh from conquering the pool, John felt ready for anything the gym could throw at him, even heavy metal weights. Clearly, John knew how to handle equipment. Sam cheered John on, as if he needed it. Adrenaline coursed through John's veins, his butthole clenched like a fist. John was forging himself into the peen he saw on movie screens, bulging and sweat slicked, hard and shiny. Boom! John was cocked and loaded. Didn't Sam ever get out of breath? The stream of encouragement was exhausting. John, getting flung from fast-moving objects since preschool. Slow and steady. That's right, John. Like a lover. Or pouring gravy. That had gotten John's heart rate up and his life expectancy down. John was sweating like a senator on a sex tape, but he wasn't done. John took a deep breath, clenched and pulled. Sam made this look so easy. John squashed the thought. He'd just have to push harder. John tried to make eye contact with Sam, get in his head a bit. Sam didn't seem to notice John, but John could tell Sam was impressed. Even though he still hadn't looked at John, not that it mattered to John, because John was in the zone, deep in the zone. With the sound of a deflating truck tire, John's sphincter gave out. Sam congratulated John for trying and told him it was okay to take things slow, as if John was going to quit. Well, he wasn't. John had a mission, and the reunion was getting closer.
As soon as John woke up, the mirror called to him. His abs looked like a pack of vacuum-sealed hot dogs. Tasty. Jim had remade John into a sculpted Adongus. He was finally everything a peen should be. Successful, traveled, and photogenic. It was time for his morning pre-gym workout. The reunion invitation caught John's eye. He read it again. And again. Stunned. He'd gotten the date wrong. Very wrong. The reunion was tonight. Tonight! He'd have to go alone. They'd all be there, and they'd look at John, and they'd know he was still a loser. No, there was still time. John needed a date fast. He'd have to go out. He'd have to make an impact. John had to dress his best, only better. There had to be someone single and desperately alone in the city. Someone besides John. He just had to find them. John went straight to the nearest bar. Sure, it was still early, but he couldn't waste any time. There must be some day drinkers he could pick up. It was a classy place. Even the vomit was high quality. The bouncer looked like a hagfish that had taken up lacrosse. Much better. John stepped into the bar and saw her. The answer to the question, what was John's purpose? Her, loving her, being with her, taking her to the reunion. Their eyes met and John knew she felt the same. Gladys did not feel the same, but John wasn't going to give up on their life together. A couple of drinks would loosen her up to their destiny. Wow, Gladys was not an amateur when it came to drinking. John had to keep up.
it was working. Gladys was definitely warming up to John. John's bladder was very full. It sloshed audibly as he moved. Holy balls! John had never felt such relief. John looked around. Gladys was gone. John cursed his petite bladder. The bored bartender shrugged and told John Gladys had left because some creep was trying to get her drunk. John's anxiety had sunk under the surface of the beer he'd drunk. While his confidence was floating high, this was the place he'd find love. It was empty, except for the bartender. Clearly this bar's only special was unhappy hour. Two for one was a good deal though, and so far the beer had lifted John's spirits. Another four would make him feel twice as good. gave John a smile that set his heart hammering. He had to impress her. What was so offensive about offering a big tip in exchange for a date? John had thought bartenders loved tips. He needed to find a better club, one with a vibe. John was drawn by the pulse of the music. It pulled him forward like a moth to a fiery death. John was running out of time to find a date and prove that he wasn't a loser. Dancing, the real way to flirt, the way of animals, of wild sexual creatures, John strutted and shook his booty. With booze buzzing round his head, John found himself on the dance floor. Everyone was up close and sweaty. John was exhilarated. He felt alive. John was working himself up to try a little bump and grind. It was a moment out of a movie. John alone on the dance floor with a gorgeous penis, their sexual chemistry exploding. She moved away, coyly. John could tell when someone was playing hard to get. He let her marinate in the tension before making his move. John wasn't taking no for an answer. Some people have no sense of fun. But John was certain the next bar would be different. 
the next bar wasn't different. John couldn't understand why everyone was so sensitive. It was like no one wanted to have a good time. Like no one had a sense of humor. John had meant that as a compliment. When did the world get so uptight? John's ego was as bruised as his shaft. He had to admit it. He'd failed. He was where he belonged, in a creepy murder alley covered in trash. John would have to go through the garbage to get out. Oh, that's gross. Oh, it's so moist, but textured. John's misery was sour in his mouth. He needed a drink to wash it down. There was still one bar he hadn't been kicked out of yet. John had cleaned himself up as much as possible. He really needed a mint. John got it in, but he needed more to satisfy the machine. Nailed it. John let out his anger, his frustration. Life was a shitty joke. It wasn't fair. You want to mess with John, do you? This is what you get. Fuck you, you fucking thing. You had one job. Die, 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 die! It's not fair. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. That's how you get what you want. Ugh, menthol. John wanted the strongest drink they had. Rough night? Someone asked John. He hadn't noticed her when he came in, but now he did. It really had been a rough night for John, but he felt a little better that someone cared enough to ask. It was a pity they were only sort of attractive. But destiny had given John a second chance. John made his move. Unfortunately, according to Alice and to her boyfriend, Chadrick, it was the wrong move. Chadrick threw John into the alley and followed, making unoriginal but still terrifying threats. Get him, John! Oh my God! I can't watch. Don't hold back! Ouch! Give it to him! Brutal. Ooh! Ugh. Yes! Yes! John had survived. No! He'd won! He'd won! He'd won! He wasn't a loser. And there was the proof for lying in a bruised, bloody heap. John didn't need a date to the reunion. He needed to go over there and beat the pre-cum out of those dicks. High school reunion, the perfect time to teach someone a lesson.
the doors of the school, a sight John had dreaded every day for years, and now he was going willingly through them, unafraid, fueled by years of unprocessed anger fermented in loneliness. John was back! The chickens were coming home to roost, and they were all cocks. Whoa, John, save it for the bullies. These were the peanlets he'd grown up with. Now with jobs and marriages and beer bellies, John was surprised at how awful they had all turned out. He spotted them, John's tormentors. Time for them to feel the wrath. That's the stuff, John. Let up! Get in there! Shake off the pain, buddy! John poured his anger into every punch. Ha! Who's a loser now? Who? Ha! John had won. He'd won. No one could say John was a loser now. John's primal joy faded as he saw how the other penises looked at him. Not like a winner. Like he was trash. John tumbled down the steps, hitting every bruise on his length and his ego. It was her, Harmony. She had been at the reunion. She'd seen it all and followed John out to laugh at him more? No, to see if he was all right. Why did that hurt John so much? This was John's chance to ask her why all those years ago she'd said to him, no one will ever love you. Harmony stared at John in shock. How could John not know why? Didn't John remember what he'd done?
There was nothing Sam enjoyed more than the fresh air of an early morning. The dew sparkling on the grass, the music of the trees, space to think. What was that smell? It made Sam's eye water. It was John, passed out and crusted with vomit and regret. John was awake and tolerably clean. Sam tried to be gentle and invited John to join him on his walk. Sam coaxed John along. It was like herding compost. John couldn't answer Sam's questions yet. How had he ended up such a wreck? John immediately felt better, but his head was still pounding, and not in a good way. The throbbing ache dulled. John was feeling much more himself, and he realized that was not what he wanted to feel. Sam saw his friend's misery. He suggested they keep going. John wanted to know something. Why didn't anyone love him? As soon as he said it, he felt like a softie, whining about his feelings. Sam didn't make fun of him. Sam asked him to go on. And so John told him the whole story about how hard he'd made himself and how unfair it felt and everything he'd done. Saying it out loud, John realized he'd sounded like an asshole. But he'd done everything right. Why didn't he get what he wanted? Why didn't John get love? Wanting someone isn't the same as loving them, said Sam. You figure it out, John. You have to keep trying. How about a bike ride? Sam asked. John struggled to get his balance. But Sam told him not to give up. John kept trying, getting better as they went.
John and Sam stopped and looked at the sunset. For a moment, John let himself be quiet and listen to the world and look at how beautiful it could be. Life can be hard, said Sam, but that doesn't mean we have to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm.